Mr. Peter Uwanchuku, the monster husband of late gospel music minister Osinachi Uwanchuku, has actually been previously married before marrying Osinachi Uwanchuku 10 years ago. So this video is going to be an update from my previous video because since I released my previous video there's been a lot of new developments a lot of shocking revelations consigning the death and the marriage of late osinachi uwanchuku so if you haven't seen my previous video you can go and check it out hello this is becky culture tv where we share content that evolves around people events and places if you are new to the channel you are most definitely welcome you can become a family member by joining us on our social media handles instagram facebook and youtube i'll be so happy to have you as part of the becky culture family if you're already a family member then you know i love you so much thank you for tuning in if you like the video please go ahead and click the like button and also share the video with your friends now let's get right into the topic So I just cannot understand as this story keeps unfolding, I still cannot understand how a beautiful, talented and God-fearing woman ended up marrying such a monster. So I would like to say that I am happy with the way this issue has been investigated so far. A lot of prominent people are taking up the issue and that's why we are beginning to you know see that more and more you know details about the story is coming out so during a visit to the children someone visited the children and the children had to say more of the things that their mother went through Aside the fact that this man had stopped this his wife Osinachi Owanchuku from pursuing a music career aside the fact that he beats her almost every day aside the fact that he doesn't allow her to go to the events that he that she is invited to the son revealed that the dad would actually push their mom out of the car when they're coming back from church during wednesday service if you guys know what the pentecostal setting looks like wednesday service is usually bible study and they close at night so he said there was a particular day they were coming back from wednesday service at night and their dad pushed their mom out of the car drove home with the with the children and allowed the mom come back home all by herself and he said that the mom was actually attacked by bad boys that night and they snatched a post and that they could not really understand how the mom managed to get home now he said that the cars that they have is being owned by the mom people dashed her this cars because she's a talented woman so maybe people who wanted to appreciate her talent gave her this cars as gifts but her husband her monster husband will not allow her use this cars he will use it whenever he pleases and she'll be left to take bike to wherever she's going to maybe to church or you know anywhere she's going to and then he went further to tell the children that beating women is good that it's a good way to you know discipline women now the latest shocking development to the story is that mr peter owanchuko has previously been married to another woman before marrying osinachi the son revealed this he said that while the mom was still alive there was a particular day the dad went out and forgot to lock his room so it means he always locks his room from his children but that particular day he forgot to lock his room and according to the story the son said that the mom had previously searched for you know stuffs from the father's room but didn't find any now that particular day the father went out and forgot to lock his room so he went into the room and started searching you know try just trying to check around things trying to explore the room and he found an old photo album that the father hid somewhere and that old photo album he said when he opened it he saw that the father had lived a wayward life a, a very wayward life so he closed it and kept it back and didn't tell anybody you can imagine what it what it growing child had to go through keeping secrets just because he knows the situation he is in and he knows that if he should reveal it he said if he should let daddy know that he has seen that album that his father would kill him so it means that this children has been living in extreme fear 
of their own father that he saw something and couldn't tell anyone he kept it to himself so while this um during after their mom's death he went to the room and brought out the album and to the shock of everyone even to the family of osinachi they found out that he was previously married to another woman from another church he actually had a church wedding with this woman a proper wedding he came to to marry osinachi wanchuku and they had absolutely no idea that he was previously married that makes me wonder when Osinachi Uwanchuku searched that room, did she not see the album? I just begin to wonder why she tolerated so much. What was she hoping for? I cannot understand it. Like when I hear things like this, I thought extreme cases like this can only happen in Nollywood movies. But to know that a woman was in such an extreme case of domestic violence, of cheating, is is just it's just overwhelming for me to understand because there's something in me that makes me feel like she might have seen the album when she, when she searched that room but she decided not to say anything about it according to the son they think that mom their mom didn't see the album but the son saw it when he went into the room to to explore the room so the family of Osinachi Wanchuku said they had absolutely no idea that this man was previously married to a woman. Now what comes to mind is what is his reason for doing all these things? Is it because of her wealth? Because from what we, we heard, he is the one that manages the finance of this woman. He decides how the money is being spent. Even though he doesn't have any money, any he doesn't have any major source of income, but whatever the woman makes from her career or from the gifts that people give her, it decides how it is being spent. People who attended the same church with this woman has actually revealed that she keeps to herself and she really does not like to mingle with people. She really does not like to talk to people and tell people things that are going on with her so that they can help her out. But why? The question is, why would such a beautiful, talented and God-fearing woman choose to stay in such a toxic situation with her children? Now, this makes me want to just talk about some few things, share some few points in this video. The first point is you can't change anybody. They can only to decide to change themselves. Because even God doesn't make choices for people. God does not force change on people. God said in his word that I present before you life and death, light and darkness. But I will advise that you choose life. So it means that the choice is yours to make at the end of the day. So if God doesn't force decisions on people or force choices on people, then who are you as a human being to think that you can force anyone to change? Prayers only work if the person you are praying for cooperates for God to help them change. Because there's been a lot of questions. I've been reading comments on social media and people have been asking that she's a God-fearing woman. She prays. Why didn't God answer her? How would God answer her when the husband is not even willing for God to penetrate his heart? Don't say I can't live because of my children. Instead, say I am living because of my children. Whenever any woman is in a toxic relationship, especially if it involves domestic violence, she should leave because of her children because it's not a healthy situation for children to grow up seeing their mom being violated and being in such a situation where her husband, their father, beats her regularly. It's not a good situation for the children to see at all. Every woman in such situation should take control of this situation. Talk to people, talk to people you trust, talk to your family, talk to pastors and let them know why you want to leave. Be the one to approach them and tell them, I have decided that I want to leave and this is the reason why I want to leave. As much as it is not an ideal situation to be a divorcee or a single parent, but a lot of people have been able to live happily with it. We have a lot of single parents, we have a lot of divorced people living happily, taking care of their children. Even though that is not the ideal situation, 
But if that is what you have to do to help yourself to save your life, then you go ahead and do it for yourself and for your children. I would like to to talk about one Pastor Funke Felix Adejumo said in her post. She said the covenant of life is superior to the covenant of marriage. So yes, marriage is good. Staying and and fighting for your marriage is good to some extent. But when it becomes life-threatening to you and to your children, then it's time to leave. So I just hope I've been able to pass a message with this. I cannot understand why such a God-fearing, talented, beautiful woman would decide to live all these years with a monster. She tried for 10 years to make it work, but she couldn't. And I don't know why she didn't get to that point where she decided that I want to leave. So those are the updates and there's still more investigations going on. According to reports, there's also going to be more more details coming from the hospital very soon. So we are looking forward to that as well. And I just hope all this, you know, will just come to a reasonable conclusion. I'm happy that the children are going to be safe because this... The the issue has called for a lot of attention. So I'm seeing that a lot of prominent people are looking into how the children can be well taken care of, which is very important. And I hope this whole thing will come to a reasonable conclusion. And I hope this will serve as a lesson to men who beat their wives. And I know it I hope it will also serve as a lesson to women who are who are in toxic marriages and who live with domestic violence.